Hey there. So, unless you've been living under a rock for the past couple of years, you know that this is SAP's Customer Activity Repository for Retail. A customer-centric, HANA-based, omni-channel data foundation for pricing, planning, near real-time inventory visibility, with predictive and dynamic order sourcing capabilities, to name a few. In this video, I'll try to provide a simplistic overview of one of the most important pieces of CAR, UDF, the Unified Demand Forecast. UDF leverages something called the Demand Data Foundation, which includes a reusable data layer that supports planning, analysis, and forecasting business processes. First, let's talk about modeling. It's an understanding of history. Okay, so what's that all about? Using the historical demand data as input, UDF tries to explain the historical sales and the impact that each demand influencing factor or DIF had on consumer demand in the past. We'll get to those demand influencing factors in a minute. So to put it simply, modeling uses all of this historical transactional information, offers products, sales channels, locations, and it takes this time series based data stored in DDF and creates a model of what demand may look like in the future. Simple, right? Well, there's more. Pre-processing. Before we even create the model, we need to do some pre-processing. And that's the step that removes all of those unwanted extreme data points that may not be relevant and may throw off the model. One example is outlier detection. Say a football team comes into your store and purchases all of your orange juice inventory on a Sunday morning, leaving you with zero stock for the rest of the day. This is not normal. It's an outlier. Another example is out of stock detection. This kicks in after multiple days with zero sales. Basically, when more consecutive days with zero sales happen than when normally expected. So, what are some of the retail specific influences that modeling takes into consideration? Demand influencing factors. You'll hear this a lot. I mentioned earlier that UDF quantifies the impact that each demand influencing factor had on consumer demand in the past. Simply put, UDF calculates and quantifies the impact of those historical factors that influence demand, like promotions, calendar events, and seasonality. We consider trends. Well, maybe not exactly these types of trends, but let's just say that UDF calculates sales trends over time and then assumes the trends will continue as seen in that data. The more history, the more the trend is enhanced. Day of week variations. How do sales patterns vary from the beginning, middle, and end of the week? Do people spend more on paydays, the first and 15th of the month? Tracking demand by day of week is important since planned promotions or price change execution dates may vary based on the calendar. Time waiting. Now, this confusing little line graph that only a data scientist could appreciate is representing waiting, which basically means that UDF can weight recent sales more heavily than older sales to better align with the latest consumer demand. The rationale is that consumer preferences may change over time. The idea is that older data tends to be less relevant to current demand and vice versa. Okay, so now let's talk about hierarchical priors. Hierarchical priors allow you to enhance the modeling of some products that simply just don't have enough historical data or promotional data in history. Examples are new life cycle products or fashion products. And when we talk about hierarchy, there is the product hierarchy where a product in a specific location inherits values from other products in the same location. Location hierarchy means that a product in a specific location inherits values from the same product, but in other locations. So again, priors are useful when we want to model for products that simply don't have enough history. And this little image pretty much depicts what we're talking about. It's something called a Bayesian tug of war between priors and historical data. Products with little historical data will generate a model closer to priors, while products with lots of historical data will generate a model closer to the data. 
And something else we can model off of for an item with little to no history is a reference product. The new product can inherit existing modeling results from the reference product. The philosophy of UDF is that it works out of the box. The algorithm adjusts to quantify or not quantify the impact of each diff without the user needing to tune it. For example, if you need to forecast for a fashion item, then the model will automatically quantify a short life cycle for seasonality that doesn't repeat and or calculate the repeating seasonality. And if there are no past trends, then no trend will be quantified. If there's no prior promotions, then no promotion is quantified. Okay, so now we get the model, right? Let's talk about the modeling outputs. What does this model actually provide? Decomposition. Okay, so remember how I mentioned that UDF tries to explain the impact that each diff had on consumer demand in the past? Well, decomposition is just that. As you can see on the screen for output, UDF generates a base demand value plus the added decomposition of demand by demand influencing factor. So in this case, we can see how the effects of seasonality, holidays, prices, and offers are added to the baseline demand. We can also see this type of decomposition breakdown for the eventual forecast as well, which we'll get into in a minute. So again, the model generates that historical demand, that output, but I see it decomposed. The forecast, finally. It's basically the model plus any planned inputs such as offers. Using the results from demand modeling and given inputs such as planned promotions and prices, UDF can predict the effects of similar diff occurrences in the future and then use this to figure out what future demand should look like. And again, the impact of each factor that adds up to the total forecast can be detailed out in, you guessed it, decomposition, just like we saw earlier. Okay, so forecast inputs. Before we said that the model plus any planned inputs equals the forecast. A simple example of a planned input would be if I would ask, what if I created a promotion for these channels and these product categories for this time period and these locations? What would my sales lift be? Okay, so now what are my forecast outputs? Let's start with the Forecast Confidence Index, or FCI. It's a measure of the amount of data available to provide a true look at demand. It's a number. The FCI is a statistical indicator of confidence in a particular unit forecast. It's always calculated for a specific product at a specific location. The more relevant historical data you have, the higher the FCI should be. The system can also estimate which of the diffs considered for a particular forecast most likely led to a low FCI. For example, we may have a low FCI because we have a new offer type in the future that has not yet been observed in the past. All right, so in the end, it's all about the number, right? The number that we generate, the forecast. The forecasted unit sales is the output that we're looking for, and UDF provides the decomposed forecast number to help us understand the impact of each diff on the forecast, like I mentioned earlier. Of course, since it's always hard to trust a number that comes out of a system, especially when you're a retail analyst, there are forecast analytics. And one good example is the Analyze Forecast app that helps us visualize how did the model get generated, what diffs impacted the model, and the eventual forecast such as seasons, promotions, and so on. Okay, let's go back to that big car diagram. You remember those consuming apps, promotions, assortment planning, and so on? Well, which one of those applications currently leverage UDF? Currently. First, I think it's important that we focus on two main types of forecasts. The what if forecast, which is not persisted. And the production forecast which is persisted at the product location, order channel, sales work, distribution channel, and day level. Go ahead and memorize that. PMR, Promotions Management, uses the what-if forecast. 
As I mentioned earlier, I can create a promotion in PMR for 10% off all products of a certain category for the next two weeks within a certain region, and then you press a button to ask for a system forecast. It goes down to UDF to fetch a response, which says, hey, I expect your sales lift to be this many units, simply speaking, of course. FNR, or Forecasting and Replenishment, is an SAP solution that's been around for a long time and has always had its own excellent forecasting logic, but will soon have the option to consume the persisted UDF production forecast. And, of course, the analytic reporting capabilities mentioned earlier do leverage the production forecast. And what about the rest of the merchandise planning, assortment planning, and so on? Well, all I could say is stay tuned. More exciting details to come. But for now, I think we're good. You've heard enough. Let's just say bye for now and see you soon. Happy forecasting.